Uh, who is the headhunter's client? I think Lonnie wanted me to address this. Um, so this is just my personal opinion. Um, I think other recruiters would think differently than I do. Uh, I am a client-centered recruiter myself. Um, there are other recruiters that will focus more on the candidate side. I'm not saying I don't, I don't focus on the candidate side, um, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm driven by the fees, uh, the fees. And so I put 5149 just to kind of joke around a little bit, but um, at the end of the day, in my view, the, the, my client is the, is the person writing the check, you know, at the end of the day. And that's not to say I'm not gonna give you good service. It's not to say I'm, I'm gonna be totally, not gonna be totally transparent with you. Um, but, you know, I tell my candidates up front, you know, that, you know, my, my livelihood is driven on the client side, uh, you know, and that's sort of, sort of how it works. Do you prefer to have the questions now or after you're done? Uh, we can go, because since we're a small group, I would say go right now. So here's, here's the uh, yep. question that I now, have. Now, let me just, let me just, let me just say, make one more comment. One more, <laughs> one, one, let me just say one more comment. <laughs> Don't in, in, in this market right now, it is brutal. And if anyone tells you it's not, they're lying. It is brutal. And I have to stick with the relationships that have paid my mortgage over the, over the last 12 years, right now. In a, in a boom economy, on a, in a strong, with a strong candidate, my position changes. I will switch this right here. Because, because what happens is the clients become a dime a dozen to get and the candidates are the harder, harder part. So I need to focus my energy more on building my pool of, of applicable candidates versus clients. Because at that point, clients are easy to get when we've seen, I've seen it three, I've seen it, I've been through two, two recessions so far. So, what was that question? Oh, well, the question was, so how does, how does this 51% uh, uh, relationship to the client manifest itself? Terms of the way that you handle a candidate. It, in, re in reality, it's really 100%. I'm sort of being facetious right here. 100%. I'm client focused. Okay, so yeah. what is but, what that but, to the candidate? I'm, I'm not treating the client, uh, the candidate, any other way, you know, because I just feel like, you know, uh, it's a human being. I need to treat them with okay. deep respect. But at the end of the day, the, the when I make that placement, that, that client writes that big check. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like I feel like that that's where my loyalty needs to be. So when it's flipped, well, I, I, I still I still I still I'm still client focused because the check's still coming from there. Yeah. And I don't mean to sound like a check like it's no big deal. What I'm trying to get to, is, yeah. and, and actually my son is a is, is a recruiter. Yep. He's actually partnered with Marty's son. And a lot and, and a lot of recruiters don't have my and, opinion. And, I, and I've never really talked to him about this in depth. What? How? How does the, the candidate? fair in all of this? What do you do differently because the candidate doesn't sign the check? Yeah, I, I think that's where your due diligence comes in with um, finding a recruiter, right? If the recruiter has the social proof on the social networking sites, if the recruiter's made, you know, a ton of placements, right? And no, I'm talking about you. What, like, yeah, when you, how, how do you, when the, the Client, your, your client base, your client focus. Yep. So how does how does that affect the the candidate search using you as the recruiter? Would would a client say, I hate this guy, don't ever send him back again? You go, oh, he was gone, or no? Like how did, how does this? Affect no, no, no. no. That's, that's a great question. That's what you say. No, because I don't agree. With, I don't agree with my. I, you know, I I I don't agree with my clients all the time. Okay. I, I don't agree with them. Okay. And so. So if I have a great candidate and they give me feedback, I think it's bogus. I can't say, well, you're full of shit. Yeah. You know, I mean, excuse my French, <laughs> you know. Well, well, is it more fundamental, I, I'm wondering why, is it more fundamental that you represent a, a, a set of clients? Correct. They have specific jobs. Correct. So the many, which becomes us. Yeah. You're, you're only going to be looking at us as how we're gonna fill that limited set of clients' jobs. Yes. As opposed to when you flip it, yep then you're going to be, the few, us, are going to be looking to you, and you're going to provide a, a breadth of opportunity and look yep. for appropriate fit. Absolutely. That's kind of the, I mean, yeah. well, I've heard it described. No, a, absolutely. And that's, that's, that's a good characterization. So in theory, then, in this economy, then, 
we would want to have multiple recruiters. You 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 would because you would clients. because I'm 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 getting I'm getting tight, I'm getting lean, and um, it's still hard to find great candidates. Yeah. It's still very hard to find great candidates. And I have some things in here I'll show you about um, uh, finding great candidates. But um, I think I, I, I you know I, not a recruiter would agree with me. They will not agree with me. Um, I think they're full of it, if you ask me. If they tell you, oh, no, it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be transparent here. That's the whole point. That's oh, why I want to, you know. And so so that's that's the whole thing about me is that, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. That's, you may not like what you hear, but I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I have kind of an interrelated question with the conversation. Okay. Do you as the headhunter help the candidate negotiate salary? Yes. Or, yes. Okay, so that's yes. part of Yes. Even though I mean, it, it's complicated. Not a complicated. It, it is a but complicated because interest. the it, it you, know, is. You, you work for the the boss who wants it to pay the least salary, and you work for the client trying to get the highest salary. It is a complicated. You're in the mortgage industry, so yeah. you understand real estate. If you list a home, you it's kind of a fiduciary problem to then to dual to do dual correct agency, to right? then put that, and that's what I'm doing. That's, that's why it's just every one of your deals. That everyone is like that, and it's just so bizarre. So insane, you know. That's why, like, people don't last in my industry. It, it's just so um, complex. Is the best way I can describe it. My second question was, yeah. um, and I don't know what the pay rate is. I don't know if it's like three months salary or yeah. how how yeah, it yeah, works. Yeah. But um, no, I'll talk about it. does the company then have to figure? Okay, we have to pay less with a candidate. Uh, you know, recruit. You know, because they have to pay out this extra commission as compared to somebody just finding them. That's a great question. Directly. That's a that's a phenomenal question. Um, the reality is, they got to pay fair market value. The, the company has to pay fair market value, or, or Lonnie's not leaving HP to go work at, you know, Nokia for for less pay because the recruiter's getting thirty grand. This is not going to happen. It, his wife won't let him. <laughs> the company, you know? the company who's paying you, yeah, to find them. Safe, yeah, right. They, so you get a percentage of the first year salary. Hiree's salary, right? Yep. So clearly, part of it is you're going to help negotiate the best salary because you get a bigger cut. Correct. Secondly, somebody who comes off the street and finds that same job yep. and applies. What's the percentage of companies in your in your experience that have hired a Headhunter candidate versus off the street candidate with similar oh, qualifications. The numbers are probably uh, now. The because there's a big difference, you know, first year salary, a percentage, let's say 20000 whatever it is, 10000 Why should they pay the recruiter yeah. when they can pocket that money and get somebody with similar qualifications it, off the street? It's completely, totally driven by supply and demand. You know, but go. The first yeah. question again, the first comment again was what? You, you made a very good point. Well, the company yeah. is paying. You correct to find them a, a somebody to fill a slot. Correct. Right? It's gonna correct. cost 120 percent of salary yeah, yeah. versus somebody off the street. It's just 100 percent. Yeah. Salary. Oh, and it's U.S. for percentages. Percentage yeah, of percentage. recruiters versus somebody who applied on their own. No. If you have a job opening, right? Yep. And you have a recruiter providing a candidate or several candidates. Yep. And some candidate or candidates off the street applying for the same job with similar qualifications. My question is, what's a percentage, in your experience, where basically you've lost out on somebody who came off, out of, you know, off the street to get that job? 25%. 25%. Approximately. Approximately. My experience with, with companies is um, they're going to they're gonna hire the best person. $30,000 is not going to stop them from hiring um, the best person. If you have two... Um, uh, equal candidates, skills, responsibilities, and accomplishments. And uh, uh, candidate A has a BS degree. Candidate B has an MBA. Um, and I represent the MBA. I mean, it's, it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, they're going to hire the best person. They're definitely going to hire the best person. From my experience. From my experience. 